What we've seen over the past couple of years is that quite a number of our clients in the FMCG sector um, have been really interested in uh, emerging markets and, and growth economies. The financial crisis really had uh, quite an impact on um, uh, their thinking around the kind of the stagnation of Western markets and the growth opportunities in, in these emerging countries. Uh, and what they've been thinking about is how do they penetrate them? What's their market entry strategy? And a lot of them have really struggled because it's not a one size fit all, fits all. So they've really been looking into how consumers buy things in these markets. And which countries have you been looking at and what sort of sample size is it? Yeah, so for this study, we looked into six markets. Um, we asked 5,000 people across these six markets. We looked into China, uh, we looked into India, we looked into Brazil, we looked into Nigeria, and we also did a comparison um, by looking into the US and the UK as well. And for some of these com companies, what, what's the entry strategy for retailing in these markets? Well, at the moment, um, as I was saying, they, they're, they're starting to look into um, the different ways in which people buy things there. Um, in developed countries, they're very much um, doing deals with the big retailers there. So looking into the Walmarts and uh, the Carrefours and the uh, Sainsbury's and Tesco's and so on. Uh, and they're very much doing a big deal with uh, a particular uh, or a number of uh, uh, companies. Whereas in uh, many of the growth markets, what we actually saw is the way people buy things is very different. Um, and so they uh, are obviously buying from the most convenient places, which happens to be um, places uh, such as the local market or such as the, the local convenience store. Uh, and so actually their, their entry strategy has to be quite different. And so they really need to take this into consideration um, when, when entering to a market. They can't simply do a deal with one big retailer. Uh, so um, when we looked into this, um, we did a little bit of secondary research as well as the primary research, and we found a really um, interesting examples. So if you look into L'Oreal, for example, um, their entry strategy into China was very much about um, buying local brands who already had this distribution network set up. Um, after they had bought these local brands, and um, what we could see is they then started introducing their own products into this to this um, existing distribution network that they had to actually get the L'Oreal brands themselves um, into uh, the Chinese uh, consumers' hands. And so coming back to the survey, what, what were the key findings of the survey? So yeah, um, first of all, um, people um, buy from different types of stores in different types of um, countries. So yeah, as I mentioned, in, um, uh, in Western markets, people very much going to discount stores, big supermarkets. In the more emerging markets, so in um, particularly places like India and Nigeria, people are very much buying from the local market, from their local convenience stores, and really not um, going to these big supermarkets like uh, like we do in, in Western countries. So in which countries did people go more to local markets than to supermarkets? Yeah, so this is um, uh, very much focused on uh, on the more emerging markets of, of Nigeria and India compared to maybe, say, China. Um, and what we saw there is there's a big link to uh, the way in which um, people actually get to these stores. Uh, and so um, in the US and the UK, and particularly in the US, people drive, um, obviously, uh, and therefore they shop um, less frequently uh, and go to these, uh, these large retail stores. Whereas in uh, the more emerging markets, um, they use public transport, or they use a bike, or they walk, or, or uh, a mode of transport like that. Uh, and so therefore, um, convenience plays a very different game. Uh, in it. Uh, so actually um, the, the frequency of um, going to these um, uh, shops increases but the amount that people buy actually therefore decreases each time they go to um, one of these stores. That has a big impact on uh, for example the, the size of um, packaging uh, for example uh, and the types of products that people buy. And you couldn't really see people walking around with uh, walking back with um, you know, uh, a six pack of cereal because it would be quite difficult to get onto their bike um, whereas they are far more, far more likely to buy a smaller um, uh, packages, um, which also has a, a big impact on um, things such as the cost of those um, products. Um, people in these markets quite often get paid in a different way. They get paid on a daily or a weekly basis rather than on a monthly basis. Uh, and so um, uh, buying these small, less expensive um, products actually um, really helps these people out as well. And what are the main factors for people switching stores in developing countries? Well, we've seen this um, uh, being um, uh, quite similar across the board, but convenience and price um, play a, a massive role uh, in this. And so um, if you have the distribution network um, into the local stores, then you've got a chance of getting people to switch products because it's going to be convenient for people to buy them. It equally, price price plays a massive impact on it, um, as it does in, in, in most places, but it's more accentuated in, in some of these uh, developing and growing markets. Are, are people spending significant sums of money on a weekly basis in these developing countries? Well, 
Yes, they are spending a significant amount of money, but the frequency in which they um, shop differs um, quite a lot. So um, yes, they're spending a, a decent amount of money and this growing middle class in many of these growth markets um, is really starting to uh, spend um, quite significantly on um, Western um, FMCG type products, um, but they spend less frequently, uh, sorry, more frequently um, than they would do in the uh, developed um, Western markets. And people at all levels spend money also on other goods, don't they? What type of goods do people spend regularly on that might be quite surprising to people not in those countries? Yeah, so what we've seen is that um, uh, the things which um, uh, we buy regularly here are also um, bought very frequently uh, in uh, many of these growing markets. And so um, our clients are very much um, the uh, people selling soap powder, the people selling um, ice cream, the people who are selling um, chocolate, the people who are selling beer, um, all of these sorts of uh, people. Uh, and they are all really working out these different plans and different strategies that they can use to get these into the hands of this emerging middle class, which we're um, starting to see in many of these countries.